Hey, and welcome back to part five of our Flask tutorial. In this video, what I want to do is add a MySQL container to our um, set of services in our Docker Compose and set that MySQL container up so that it can be accessed from within our application. So the first thing we're gonna do to get started is I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm just gonna call it DB. And in that folder, I'm going to add a new file that we're going to put our initial, oops, sorry, new file, that we're gonna put our initial database structure in. So what this is gonna be used for, and I'll just call it db.sql. This db.sql file is going to be used by Docker and the container to sort of bootstrap our database server with tables and data and whatever else we put in the file. Okay, so inside this file, so remember we're in, we're in MySQL. So um, what I wanna do is uh, firstly create a database. So create database, um, we'll call it test. Um, then we want to create a user that can access the test database. And so we're gonna create user, we'll call it web app and at percent sign identified by ABC123. So what this is, is a user that has the password ABC123 and the web app and the at percent sign means that the web app user will be able to connect from basically any IP address. So just to be clear, we're leaving some security holes uh, for the sake of simplicity for this particular tutorial. You would, of course, wanna have a better password than ABC123, that's just a terrible, terrible password. And you would want to probably limit the set of valid IP addresses that a database user like WebApp could um, log in to uh, using some wild cards in the, the second part after the at sign. But for now, just to kind of get things going, we're gonna leave it uh, like this. All right, so we have a database, we have a user. Now we need to tell MySQL that we want this particular user to have access to our database called test. So we're gonna grant all privileges on test.star. So you can grant individual privileges to users. So you could have, you can grant like um, select, update, delete. You can grant individual privileges on a particular database to a particular user in MySQL. And it's the, it's the user uh, that has the IP address associated. So for instance, you could allow web app all privileges when it's coming from localhost, but only read privileges when it's coming from you know, some other IP address. Again, we're not gonna get too complicated to start. So we're just gonna grant all privileges on test.star. So everything in the test database, and we're gonna grant it to our new app, uh, our new user. So web app at, uh, sorry, at uh, percent, okay? Um, now we need to flush privileges so that the privileges we just granted to web app will actually take effect in the database. So flush privileges. Okay, uh, then we need to tell MySQL what database we're using. So we're gonna be using the test database. Um, then we can create um, a sample table. So we'll say create table, um, let's just call it products. And um, we'll have a product ID. We'll have it as an integer and we'll have a name, a product name, that's a varchar, we'll say 50. And then we'll insert into products values, we'll add a couple of rows, so one, two, three, um, keyboard, one, three, four, two, comma, 
mouse. For now, that should be good. All right, so we have uh, creating our database, creating our user, granting all privileges to that user for the database we're creating. We're gonna flush the privileges. Then we're gonna we're gonna um, basically open the test database, create a table in it, and insert a couple of uh, rows into that table. Okay, so now that we have our um, bootstrap file created, our db.sql, I call it a bootstrap because it's gonna basically kind of get the, the database going. Um, we need to go back to our Docker Compose and start setting up the database container, okay? So back at Docker Compose, we're going to go back and we want to be lined up with the Python app So because we're creating a new service. And I'm gonna call this the DB server, okay? Um, our, the, the, uh, image we're starting with is just going to be the standard MySQL image. So image MySQL 8. So that's version 8. We're going to map open uh, the standard port for MySQL, which is 3306. So ports 3306 colon 3306. All right. So this is going to map port 3306 of your local machine to port 3306 inside the container. And so that the container is the standard, or I'm sorry, 3306 inside the container is the standard port for MySQL to be listening on for connections. If when you create, uh, when we when we spin this container up, if you get a port mapping error saying that port 3306 is in use, that means that you'll need to change this number, the first number, the first 3306 to some other number, 3307 for instance, okay? Now we're going to use an environment variable and you'll see what's, you see why I left a space in a second. So we're gonna create an environment variable um, that's going to provide a, a root password for MySQL. So MySQL root password equals, and I'm gonna use ABC123. Now, normally, if you put spaces around equal signs, it doesn't matter, but uh, it does matter in this case. So just just put it all together. Now, this particular password or this particular environment variable, if you're curious where I got that from, or it's it's not just pulled out of thin air. If you look at the MySQL image page on Docker Hub, you'll find a bunch of helpful information and some of that information will be initial environment variables that you can use that MySQL as it's starting up um, will use to configure itself. Okay, so now that we have those things set up, what I wanna do is um, I want to map this folder, not kind of like we did up here, but I wanna map this folder db into the MySQL container in a very particular place. So I'm gonna say volumes, I'm gonna indent, and the folder that I want to map is the .db. And so this, what you, what you put here is gonna be whatever the name of this folder is, not the file, but just the folder. And then it needs to be mapped into docker entry point init db.d and we're going to mount it as read only so that's what the ro stands for so docker entry point init db.d again in the same place you would find information about this particular environment variable uh, on the docker hub page you would find that this um, this particular location any files that you copy into that location or you mount into that location um, will basically automatically be executed by the MySQL server instance as it's starting up. So when MySQL is starting up inside the container, it's gonna to go to this db.sql uh, and look and see what code is in there. And it's gonna execute those commands, the create database, the create user, flush privilege, all that stuff. It's gonna, so meaning that by the time the MySQL server is like ready to go and start it up, you'll have a table, you'll have some data in the container. Um, all right, so we're gonna save this and we are going to, 
uh, just kind of do a dry run and see if the application, um, if everything is sort of working. And I want to point out a few messages. So I'm going to clear the terminal. Um, I'm going to make sure that I've cleared out containers. So I'm going to do docker compose down. So it's going to delete container and the network. Then I'm going to build the containers again. So this this time it'll be docker uh, compose build. Now yours may uh, show a lot more things downloading. Um, it may take a while because uh, the very first time you build um, a, a, an image based on MySQL, it, it might have to download some the MySQL image, which is, I don't know, half a gig or so. All right, so now that we have it built, we're going to go ahead and start it. So we're going to do Docker compose up. Okay, so now you'll see we have this, the app dot, um, the, the application information, and then we have DB server, which is the name of our new service. And it's, it's spitting out a lot of things, some of, all of which are important, some of which are, uh, you'll be able to interpret. The one I want to point out right now in particular is this line right here. So you'll, you'll kind of note that it says entry point, um, and it's executing something docker entry point sh don't worry about that but you'll see that it says running docker entry point blah 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 db.sql so that means that it was able to see our db.sql file and execute it um, if there were any errors in your sql syntax um, i don't know let's say you spelled table wrong or something like that you would see that right here uh, you would see an error message um, so just kind of uh, I know it's kind of hard to spot, but just look for um, whatever, whichever line ends in db.sql or whatever you name your SQL file. If you don't see that line, that means that you either haven't mapped the container correctly um, or there's some error before it gets to that point. Okay, so it looks like our containers started up okay. So we're gonna shut this down um, and I'm gonna stop the container. So uh, Docker compose, I'm gonna, I stopped the containers, now I'm gonna tear them down, so docker compose down. All right, so um, what we're gonna do next is make a connection from our application into uh, the database and see if we can select some data from our sample database. Um, okay, so coming back over here to our app.py, I'm just going to leave it in app.py for now, just for simplicity's sake. So um, in order to make the connection, uh, we're going to need a few additional items. Okay, so um, ultimately we're going to use a new library, uh, a Flask extension library to connect to MySQL. So we're going to say from flask ext.mysql import my SQL. Okay. Um, now, if you don't have MySQL Flask installed, I'm, uh, yeah, the Flask MySQL extension installed, um, you're going to get either some red squigglies or something like that. So I'm going to come down here um, into the terminal and I would just do something like pip install, um, I think it's uh, Flask dash MySQL. I already have it installed, so this should say it's it's already satisfied, but that should work for you if, if you're using um, Python that's using pip. All right, so now notice I had to install a new uh, library so that I could potentially get rid of red squigglies in my code. So that should clue you in anytime I have to do, anytime you have to do pip install in your terminal for your local machine, you probably need to add that to your requirements.txt. Uh, so we're going to add flask dash MySQL. Okay. And um, the another requirement that's needed um, for um, encryption and whatnot is the Python cryptography header. So while we're not necessarily directly using it, um, this won't work without it because there's some things in MySQL Flask that, or C, I'm sorry, Flask MySQL that need it. So we're gonna, okay, so we're gonna 
add that to our requirements.txt. Now, for cryptography to work, it actually needs access to some operating system level information, um, some operating system libraries. And so we're gonna have to modify our Docker, our Docker file so that our, our base image for our application has everything that's needed for Python to operate. So I'm gonna come, uh, I guess I can do it right here, and I'm gonna add another line. I'm gonna say run apk, so this is like the package manager for Alpine. I'm gonna add gcc musl dev python3 dev lib ffi dev and open ssl dev. And so again, um, you don't need to know what all this means. You just need to know that in order for um, the cryptography library to work in Python, it needs uh, these things at the operating system level. So we're gonna save those packages. I'm sorry, we're gonna save those changes to the Docker file where we just added the packages. Um, and so, yeah, so let's go back to our um, application, our app.py, and we can start um, adding in the code to connect to the database. All right, sorry, just pulling that up for a second. Okay, so we have our MySQL object, or our MySQL header. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to add some environment variables, basically, to the application, the Flask application object. And the MySQL object is gonna make use of those variables when connecting to the database. So for the sake of brevity, I'm going to copy and paste them so you don't have to watch me type. And it also means I will make less errors. Um, so let's see, I'm just gonna do control C. Control V, um, and then we need to add one more. So app.config um, MySQL database DB. So what database are we connecting to is going to be the test database. So it'll be whatever database we're creating in our uh, database, in our file here. Now, um, this should be 3306, so it should be whatever is in uh, whatever is this number right here, okay? Um, and then for host, you can leave it localhost. Um, that uh, might cause some problems because the, the database server is not actually running on localhost from the perspective of the um, Python application. So remember the Python application, the Flask application is in one container, MySQL is in another. So the database is not actually on localhost. But what is the host name? Well, uh, whenever you create these services in uh, Docker Compose, whatever the name of the service is here can be used as the host name sort of throughout the application. So I'm going to call it DB server. Uh, we're going to connect to port 3306, user web app identified by 123, and then the database we want to connect to. And so we should have that good to go. So let's set up our connection object, so I'll do db con for connection equals a new MySQL object, and that's coming from that um, library we just imported above, so from from here, right? And then I'm going to initialize everything, db con equals, uh, I'm sorry, not equals, dot init app, we're going to pass the app object, okay? so. I'm going to create a new route. Um, it's gonna be registered to app because we're in app, not in one of the um, not in one of the blueprints. So at app.route. I'm just gonna call it test db or yeah, test db. Um, I'm going to okay, so now define a function. It's a, just a get route. So uh, define testing the database. Terrible function name, but you get the idea. First thing I'm gonna do in uh, testing the database is I'm going to create what's called a cursor. So cursor, uh, just a variable equals db connection dot get db dot cursor. 
So a cursor is a database term that kind of uh, refers to a temporary storage of the result of executing a query. All right, so we have our cursor. Now we're going to execute a query. So cur.execute, um, execute. And then the query we're gonna execute is select star from, and then our, the name of our, our table is products. So we'll do products. Um, all right, so that's gonna execute the query. Then what we need to do so that we can actually return JSON to the front end is we're going to say row headers. We're going to we're going to write a few lines of code that's going to kind of JSON JSONify our um, result set, our cursor, the data that's in the cursor. Um, so what I'm going to do is say um, we're going to use a um, little quick line of Python here to grab what is basically the uh, column headers. Uh, they're called row headers, but um, I guess I could call them column headers. It doesn't particularly matter. It's just, uh, you know, if you were thinking about the result set as a table, it would be what would be at the, uh, the names of the columns. So x sub zero for x in cur dot dsc description. Okay, all right. So then we're going to create an empty um, array, or list, I should say, sorry. We're going to create a variable and then get all the data from the cursor. So the data equals cur.fetch all. So that's going to actually return the data from the cursor. And then we're going to use a for loop. to iterate over each row of the result from executing that query. Okay, and so to JSON data, that um, container we created right above here, we're going to append a dictionary that has been created by zipping together row headers um, and the current row that we're on. So it's going to take the row header, you know, the first row header, zip it, then the column value, and so on and so forth. And then um, we're going to return that uh, object JSONified. So JSONify JSON data. Okay, so we're going to get a squiggly for a second because we don't have uh, the, we need to import JSONify from Flask. Okay, so once we do that, uh, where's, where's our route? Okay, so see the red squigglies go away, or they were yellow, I think. Um, just for completeness or for correctness, uh, I'm gonna change this to call header. I think it's a little bit confusing to call it row header. Um, so there's that, I need to change it there. Okay. All right. I just happened to notice while looking at this, um, I need to I need to put a slash there so that the route works. Okay. So just to recap, we're creating our cursor, executing the query, um, select star from products. This can be any sort of valid query. It could be an insert statement. It could be an update statement. We're using select here. Um, we're going to iterate, or we're going to grab the from the cur the cursor description. Um, we're going to grab the first element, which will be the, the column headers, if you think about the data as columns, or kind of in a table format. We're going to create this sample, uh, not sample, uh, sorry, we're going to create this example, no, not example, what am I thinking? We're going to create this empty container, that's the word I'm looking for, this empty container for the data. Um, once we JSONify it, so it's gonna go there. Then we're going to uh, get all the data from the cursor. We're gonna fetch all. Iterate over each row of that data set. And we're going to zip together column headers with rows. And so it's gonna take a column header and a data value and a column header and a data value. And we're gonna um, create a dictionary out of that. And then we are going to uh, append that to 
this container that we created here. And then we're just going to return that data uh, JSONified. Okay, so let's see what sorts of errors we made. Maybe we didn't make any, so making sure all my files are saved. So back in the terminal, I think I uh, brought down my containers, but I'm just going to double check. So docker compose down. And then I'm going to build docker compose build. And you'll see some additional output. So it's it's installing those things from the Docker file now. Now it's installing um, everything that's in the requirements.txt. And so we have our image. Great. So let's do docker compose up to build the containers. And we're looking, there's our statement just passed by for knowing that um, the initialization worked. So we have this right here. So that's great. Okay, so seems as though the pieces are connected. So just to remind ourselves, the endpoint for us is test DB. So I'm going to go back now to my handy browser. Let's just make sure the base route works. Okay, so that's working. So now I'm going to go to slash test db and see what happens and there's our data um, you uh, if you get some error messages here they'll be kind of nicely formatted um, but you might get a you know can't connect to database or this user can't access um, this particular database if you get those you'll just need to go back and double check that you've uh, typed everything in correctly um, all right so just to recap we have um, made a few modifications to our files. So first of all, um, we created our database bootstrap file. So just has some basic database commands in it. Um, then we needed to update our Docker compose file to um, add a new image. So for our DB server, so our MySQL image, mapping our ports, we're going to mount that that file that we that uh, bootstrap file we created into this very specific location that has to be that it can't be anything else um, as read only. We're going to set a absolutely abysmally horrible MySQL root password. Do not ever do this. Um, and certainly, if you have your password inside your Docker Compose, don't push that to GitHub or any other public repository. Um, okay. So then um, in terms of setting our application up, we needed to be able to import our uh, uh, MySQL libraries, um, which is a Flask extension library. We also need JSONify. Um, in order to import all those things and be able to connect to MySQL, we needed to add two different, uh, two additional libraries to our requirements.txt. And so that cryptography could actually um, be installed, uh, it needs some operating system level libraries, which come from this statement right here. So once we do that, we created our um, configuration variables in or environment variables inside the um, Python application. We set up our MySQL object, connected the object to the application because these environment variables live inside the application. And then we were a sample route that just selects everything from our sample database and yeah, pull our containers down, rebuild and spin them up and go to that endpoint and we should be good to go. All right, thanks.